I came up with five ways that you can upgrade and customize your figures. Hey, today we're talking about making custom action figures. I know not everyone's journey is the same, but for me, I started off as a photographer who became a collector. And so then I wanted to learn more about taking pictures of smaller things. And like with most things that I enjoy, I do try to get good at it. Like I always try to learn and get better. And so when it comes to taking pictures of toys, the next step for me was, I think I can make the subjects look better. So that's when I jumped into customizing figures. When it comes to customizing action figures, it's not like you have to jump in and just make a 100% from scratch action figure. There's ways of upgrading. That's something that I've been really trying to do more recently. And I, I like the word upgrade, like, you know, it sounds cool. That is a form of customizing a figure. Throughout the video, I'm gonna mention a lot of different tools, which I will have all listed in the description. Starting off with the first way you can customize your action figure, kit bash. Kit bashing involves using pieces from different figures and just combining them. You're using kits from different characters and bashing them together. I don't wanna to say this is the easiest upgrade you can do, but it is definitely one of the more simple ways. So whether you're swapping out armor pieces or head pieces or boots or accessories or soft goods, it's definitely a simple way to create a custom figure. For this Cody, I used, of course, the Black Series Cody helmet. So I just popped that off. One easy way to remove pieces from figures is going to be either using a heat gun or like a blow dryer. Heat guns are super powerful blow dryers that can be really dangerous, so be careful. Uh, or you can heat up water to like almost boiling, like just hot water, and you know, just dunk your figure in there. It softens all the joints and it can be hot. So once again, be careful and you're able to pop off the joints without breaking any pegs. Some figures, it just depends on the joint, like you can pop them out already, but it's better safe than sorry. Whether you're heating up water or keep blowing the figure, boom, like just pop out the joints. And this is the Rebel Commando, one of the newer releases, and I just put the helmet on. It doesn't fit perfectly in there in the joints, but I used some fun tack just to keep it kind of sticky in there, which you'll see a lot throughout the video. I think it came with this belt sling pouch. So I have that on and then I have, if you recognize this, it's Han Solo, it's the Rebel Han Solo Black Series, his jacket and boom, I just put it on this. It's custom Commander Cody. For the, for the helmet, I did do some weathering, which we'll talk about in a bit. That's pretty much it, you know, Kit Bash Commander Cody. So this is the picture I got with him and I did, I did one for Rex also. Just to show, like here's some accessories that I got from other figures, backpacks, belts that I cut, sling and pouches from Mezco Old Man Logan that I have. Like this is, you'll see this is one that I use a lot. I like putting this on Mandalorian. Is this trench coat jacket. It's leather. It's really, really, really well made. Like I'd love to make soft goods like this. It has a wire in it. And so I like putting this on different figures and it, you know, it just gives extra flavor to your to your figure, making it custom. So also for this cow, all I did, not a huge thing, but I didn't really like the poncho that it came with, but I did like this vest from Han Solo to kind of add some contrast to the his orange suit. I really like the way it looks. Very, very simple kit bash. Is it a full custom? Maybe not, but you know, I, I, I think it works. For this Obi-Wan, I just added the backpack which is funny because like a lot of people comment, like when I posted the picture of him, a lot of people commented like, what's the backpack? Or like they recognized it was from the Black Series Sand Trooper. Like it's just a little bit that goes a long way. But also his head sculpt is from the Clone Commander Kenobi. For some reason, I feel like this is like one or two tiers above all other Black Series Obi-Wan head sculpts. And so I got every, on all my Kenobi shots, I use this head sculpt. I just pop that on there. You know, that's a form of kit bashing, right? popping on a different head. Once again, fun tack, cause it doesn't have the same joints. Pop that on, backpack. Looks like a pretty solid Mythos Kenobi. And another thing I did was I did spray it with some matte coat, which I'll mention in a bit. Onto our second way of customizing figures, weathering. I'm not counting weathering as painting, which is another way to upgrade. The easiest way to weather is going to be using just a black or brown wash. And so what is a wash? Well, essentially it's just black paint that's usually really watered down and you're just painting your figure, it's getting in all the cracks, it's getting in all the 
details and it's just making it black like where dirt would build up normally that's pretty much it for for the wash and if you want you, you know you can pat dry some away so you can do that with basic cheap acrylic black paint brown paint you can use like you can make a wash out of any color you want some fancier washes that i have are going to be the from vallejo these model washes and these work extremely well like i've been using these a lot recently for a lot of my recent upgrades I won't use these on dioramas because I use black washes on dioramas as, as well. But if you're in it for quality, these are a little more pricey, but I, I really, really like them. They come in, there's some different, other different shades, but I have a, like a black, a brown, like a dark gray. And then another way is using shoe polish, which I did start out using that a lot. And that can still work like really well for certain things, but that one is a little more permanent like it does pretty much stain like almost dye the plastic and so it can be harder to work with it's still good it's still like very effective uh, i might use it for certain things but if i'm you know if i'm really trying to do a good custom or a good upgrade like i'm not going to be using shoe polish anymore and and i think it's good to experiment you know maybe you like it way more than i do maybe it is really good and i'm not doing it right uh shoe polish can be can be an option too make sure it's the liquid shoe polish i don't think the like the cream rub on one works for the zombie cap i, I didn't really do too much i kind of just like put it on and i have come a long way it's not the best job, but it definitely looks better than like how it originally comes. And even even with this guy, like I know there's a bunch of different things that I can do better to make to really make him pop more. But for, for this, I just kind of got him dirty. I just did the black and brown wash and the matte coat. Like I think I think it's good enough for, for photos. Another way of adding some weathering, uh, I've used this powder stuff from Tamiya, Tamaya. There's, they have a bunch of different colors that you can use. It's a powder that, it's kind of like makeup. You, you brush on and you can brush in certain parts. I used it for, for this Merrick upgrade on some of the rust parts that he has. I did try painting at first, but I, I didn't really like the way it was looking, which I, I know some people can get a good rust look. I popped this on and I kind of brushed some on and like it looked really, and it looked really, really good. So I, I really like how, the, how that came out on this armor. One way that I do want to get better at is going to be the carbon scoring, which is like the black lines, you know, on like thinking of a stormtrooper or a clone trooper with the white armor, like the black lines that kind of go across. One of my first examples, which I realized I did like way too much, uh, I used to cut a lot of lines, which can still be effective, like cut some scratches in, you know, battle damage the armor up, which is a way of weathering. One theme that I do recommend is, or like idea to keep in mind when when painting and doing stuff is less is more. For this one, it was one of my first ones. I was super excited. Like I used a, a blade or my metal scribe and I just cut a lot and like did a lot of scratches. And then I did like a wash to really bring out those scratches. It looks like too much. Like, can it work? Like, is there a trooper that might look like this? Sure. But for a normal clone, clone trooper damage, like it's, it's way too much. Uh, definitely a lesson learned there and, and one thing I'm trying to, to get better. I'm not a master, I'm a photographer first, but like this is my journey of learning that I'm sharing with you. So one way that is good for, for the carbon scoring, which I will be implementing more, is going to be like using a, a thin marker. Like I have the Gundam markers and I have these other Molotov markers that are thin. And what you do is kind of on the on the raise the lines or like certain pieces, uh, certain flat pieces, you can just put like little dash, almost like dash marks and dots kind of. And it's a really good way to add some of that carbon scoring. And remember, a little goes a long way. Like you don't want to outline the whole thing, but it's, it's a way that you can, you know, you can add some of those black marks. And from afar, it looks different than up close. In a photo, it's gonna look different. Remember, less is more. It's easier to add than to take away. And when it comes to a lot of these paint marks, like one thing that you can use is like a paint thinner or nail polish removal for certain stuff. Also, a reminder to wear a mask because some of those fumes are like toxic. And you can just, you know, with a Q-tip or cotton ball or sponge, you can just rub that off less is more it's easier to add more than it is to take off for this snow speeder which is one i did recently i kind of did some panel lining which wasn't necessary but i kind of like the the look of it for this for this ship and I, I tried to wipe some away too i did give it a brown wash and some black wash i added some other black marks and another thing that you can do for weathering for certain things if it's metal 
is add like silver spots. Um, for this, I used a, a, a ripped up sponge, dabbed it in some silver paints and just kind of blotched it on there, which is kind of the same thing I did for, for this Magna Guard on certain parts. Like I really wanted him to, you know, show some shiny metal. And so I dabbed it silver and then dabbed it on there because he had some already on the original like it didn't look that like silver it didn't look metal it just looked gray so i wanted it to shine and 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 pop out more so sponge like is a really great tip to dab it in there and i mean you can use a paintbrush too but i just found that the sponge was, was really effective in creating that texture in the spots focusing on the on the snow trooper part of like adding that dirt and grime in there uh, this was just a black wash that I kind of let sit. And so I really like how it looks in some of those edges. You know, certain parts, once again, I'm learning, it might be a little too much. I do like how it how it sit in there. And, and so that's all black wash, that's all weathering. And then as I mentioned, a black wash or brown wash or whatever wash is mainly just like a, the cheap acrylic paint of your color with with a lot of water. Like you do want it pretty watery. You don't want to paint it black you know you want it to kind of run down and just be be like really wet and liquidy uh, another tip that i've seen that I, I have experimented with and i do like which is where i think like this kind of comes into play is going to be using like dish soap or this dishwashing liquid it has a certain element of being able to to spread and dry like a certain way rather than like painting on when it does come to weathering and making potential mistakes, you know, weathering is getting it dirty, is like you're kind of breaking it down. Yes, you don't wanna to do too much, but if you do kind of mess up somewhere, like I've said in previous videos about this, it's it's battle damage. So, and don't worry too much about be, it being perfect. Painting might take a little more skill because it does have to have like a certain color or whatever, but weathering is, you know, you're making it dirty on purpose. So I think it's a good entryway into painting and experimenting with upgrading and customizing your figures. When it comes to weathering and using some of these like more special paints, I recommend not using your fancy brushes if you have any. Like just use whatever brush, use a cheap brush. There's a bunch of different, you know, options like I have a bunch of bags and save the good ones for the actual painting. Third way to customize a figure, painting. So when it comes to painting, it's pretty much just painting. For certain figures and plastics, it can be hard to actually paint on it. So one thing that I do and that, I, that I've seen recommended a lot is starting off with a, a sealer or matte spray because what that does is it gives you something to paint onto because sometimes the plastic can be pretty difficult and it's not gonna hold any paint. So like a quick process, and this also goes for the weathering, is you know kind of rinse off your figure, get some of that oil off or, and all that, and then just spray them down. Like it doesn't have to be a ton. These are some options that I use for a matte coat. And I'm gonna try this one out because I've seen this one highly recommended as well. Just spray the figure and not a clean canvas, but it gives you a canvas to paint on. Also, even just spraying this matte coat can, can be an upgrade in itself. Like going back to Cal here, is I sprayed him down and it also makes the faces pop a lot more because a lot of times like, you know, they're just shiny and plastic and they look like toys. But when you spray this matte coat, it does give an element of like, it makes it look a little more real and presentable. Plus for photography, when you're lighting, it doesn't shine and reflect as much. So that's a bonus. So just, even if you just get a figure and spray it with the matte coat, like, you know, that can, that's an upgrade. For this guy, he was, it's the Death Watch uh, Mandalorian, and this is unpainted, obviously, and this is painted. After I gave him the matte coat, I painted him black. Like, there's different ways that you can paint. The two biggest ways, which there might be more, I don't know, are gonna be with the brush or with an airbrush. There, there's some cheap options. Like, I did have this other option that had the, the built-in can, which is the one I used. And it's good for certain things, but like it doesn't really last that long. And it's not that, like there's gonna be a sense of quality. So there are some good beginner options, like, like and this is the one that I use, it's, it's a master airbrush. And, and, this is, and so I ended up buying this compressor, which was a pretty basic, not like the, the best one out there, but like it, it was a good one and, and affordable. What I ended up doing was I used this masking tape. This is like a pretty cool, fancy one that they have different sizes. This is the 10 millimeter. This is also by Tam Tamaya, Tamiya. It's a really good tape for peeling off, kind of like how painters tape, it doesn't like, you know, pull stuff off, but 
it's just a really good size for for customizing and, and for models that, that people use them for. So I had put all around, like I had pretty much covered him in the tape and then I just kind of, sp I just spray painted black and that was, that was it. It was easy to not have to worry about, you know, being perfect. It was kind of just like he's covered, so it's okay. And then boom, airbrush. And then after that, I did do a seal. And so he's pretty like locked in, like no paint's gonna come off. And I had made this one for my son, like a video, I did a video for him and he really liked them. But I kept the undersuit because that's like another another tip is be careful with the joints. Like there's gonna be a lot of wear and tear when you're bending. Like Ahsoka, I did one. You can kind of see here is a good example. Like you can paint them and, and, I, and I tried sealing and I mean, if someone has like permanent way to fix this with painting, like I'm definitely down to here, but I haven't seen one. The way to go about this is to, if you dye the plastic, because if you, when you dye it, it's like, you know, permanently changing the, the elements of the plastic and so it's getting in there and it might still rub off or but not really chip i haven't experimented with dyeing but i do like i have some dye that i do want to try probably make a video on that when i do mess around with that so just be careful with the with the joints when you are painting for this i had made this tech this is kind of like after season two finished like the black series versions weren't out yet and i really wanted to to make the scene like spoiler alert of when he's falling. So I painted him. I, I didn't do a perfect job. This is still like, you know, earlier in my painting journey and I can easily see how I could have done better, but I had to put some tape there. And for this, I did use a brush. I did use some paint and I just painted on. And then even his leg or his legs, I did airbrush, which was supposed to be blue, but they came out purple. And when I made the picture, I kind of altered the color a little bit to make it look real. And then one one big way, which you don't have to paint the whole figure, that's that's obviously an option, but one big way that you can upgrade your figures is just by painting like the pouches or the belts. Like one of my favorite paints is this one by Army Painter, the leather brown. Like it just looks really good, like straight out of the bottle. Like you can just slap it on with a brush and paint it. Just looking at little things that you can make a little bit better. Cause sometimes it's like, it's supposed to be leather brown, but like it doesn't really look, you know, brown or leathery. What can you do to make it pop more? Or for Darth Malgus here, I had painted the centerpiece. So I did, I did give him a matte coat and then I also weathered him, but I also painted this centerpiece silver cause it was like some of it was black and some of it was gray and I could have done his face mask too, but I, in, and I did his little belt here just to make it like it pops a little more than when it was first like out of the box. To me, I like the way this looks and it looks a little more real. And so when it comes to taking a picture, it's gonna be a lot easier to make a good picture than if you just take him out of the box, set him up, he's not gonna look as cool. This is a very simple upgrade. You just add some silver to some of the, the metal pieces in your figure. And also for, for this Merrick, I did paint all the pieces. In addition to the, the weathering, I had painted him a dark gray, and then I did weather him with this. Combining painting, and then you're adding the weathering. Like I did add some of that charcoal effect. I did paint the buttons, which doesn't really matter for my photography, because I always add like the little lighting effects anyway. One other thing that I've been using recently, and so this is my first official like face paint, Cause this is like face painting is like a whole nother level of painting, right? It's like you can paint a figure and it's easy to paint a leather bag. But when it comes to like painting a face, that's, that's, you know, that's a couple more videos away. But I am proud of this. I followed a few different like face painting tutorials. It was really hard for me, but one thing that I used with this for the first time is going to be this wet palette also by Army Painter. And so what that does is that's gonna be like the biggest tip. There's not a lot of videos out there about customizing figures, but there's like a ton for like Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons figures and like other board game figures, there's a ton out there. And a lot of the same, you know, techniques and resources apply to this. One of the biggest tips that I've seen is to thin your paints. For certain things, for certain paints, it's easy to, you know, let me just pour and then paint. For most of them and for a lot of like the little details and bigger pieces, even when it comes to like a, a good brush, like if your paint is just there, it's gonna dry it's gonna come on thick and it's not gonna look good at all. But if you do use, if you do do a good job of keeping your paint moist, 
then like you don't have to use the wet palette. Definitely not necessary. But you know, you gotta you gotta rinse your brush off, keep it wet, and then paint, and then dip and paint and and try to get it light. But the wet palette really helped and in my experience with just keeping it wet and it flowed like really nicely, a bunch of like thin layers going on, and it really helps eliminate those brush strokes. I haven't really used like super fancy brushes yet. I have some like ones that came with a kit from Army Painter. Uh, I have a Citadel brush, which is an awesome paint brand that I've been using recently. Uh, it came in like a kit, like a starter brush that I really like. So I have noticed some differences when it comes to brush quality, but I don't, I don't want to invest in like some big brush, big fancy brushes yet because I'm still learning. And so that's a, I guess a tip for you is like, don't buy like the best stuff possible, but you know, buy some good beginner stuff that you can learn with because maybe you might get frustrated and, and stop this completely. Right. So I don't want to you don't want to buy a bunch of things. One other brush that I really like, these might be for makeup, I'm not sure, is, is these brushes, which I have listed. And like, I like these for dry brushing. And so what dry brushing is, it's obviously the opposite of using a wet palette, is you have the paint there, and then if you rub all the paint, like you dip it, and then you kind of rub all the paint off uh, on paper or whatever, then, and then you kind of like lightly brush on. And so with this chrysanthemum is, that's what I did. Besides, I did repaint some of these metal pieces and this leather piece. But what I did also was I got some like super light gray or almost white paint. And then I dry brushed onto his fur. So like barely, like I'm not pressing down. I just kind of barely like brushed on some of that white. So you can really see the detail that really pops out. So this doesn't, this technique doesn't work too well if it's just a flat surface. But if, if there's any kind of texture to it, it's gonna stick to that. And it's gonna really like make it pop. So all these little hairs that you can see, like he was pretty much just black. If you have one, you can look at your out of the box for Santin. He was pretty much just black, but this adds a lot of extra detail. And so I really like that technique too. So dry brushing, uh, you can check these out. These are cheap. I got like 12 of them. And I got, I'm only gonna use these for, for dry brushing. Do you have to use these? No, like you can use any brush. Also another one, kind of going back to the sponges, like you, I, I use these like kitchen sponges, but you can also use makeup sponges, which uh, I don't have any, but I know I'll get some later. And like these are gonna be, it's a finer material. That's just gonna be easier to, to dab on or, or dry brush when it comes to using that sponge because you don't want it caked on there with a sponge. Some other head sculpts that I'm trying to paint. These are a little bit easier because they don't have the, you know, detail eyes. They're not done yet, but I was just experimenting and practicing like an easy way. You gotta find you gotta find ways to practice that are easy enough to succeed, right? So you can be encouraged rather than like I've never painted anything. Let me go paint a face with real eyes and detail. You know that's gonna be a little challenging, a little overwhelming. So I, do, I don't recommend starting with painting faces. Like paint paint the details, paint the you know certain parts, and then you can explore and get better at that. Another thing with weathering or painting is using an eraser because it's easy to erase and like you kind of rub off some of the, the paint, any extra grime that you might have added. It's a good way to get rid of that. Quick tip. Moving on to our fourth way to customize action figures, adding soft goods. This is definitely one of the bigger upgrades that I've done. Like I wouldn't call them a full, you know, complete custom. The biggest thing that I added for this guy, for the snow trooper is gonna be the soft goods. His comma I did change and then his whole jumpsuit I've kind of mixed it up, made it made it more gray. And this was just a solid gray, but I ended up airbrushing it to, to change the color and try to get it dirty. So some of it, like this is my first time doing it like this. I tried to weather it, it might, it might be a little too much, but overall in the end, I really liked the way that it looked. Another detail, I painted the bags. I also painted the boots, which kind of going back to our other way, like looking for little ways to upgrade because compared to the original version, you know, it doesn't really look that fancy or cool. So for this, I did paint the silver on the belt and the bags and the shoes. This hand is actually from another figure, kit bashing. And I did add another kit bash. I did add this belt. And so for this, when you're doing a complete custom, I just use super glue. And so if you're wondering like, oh, how did I attach these parts? I just super glued the knee pad to the cloth. Like really lightly, I don't, I don't want it spread. I don't want it too much. Like that's just the shoulder pad. It's just super glued. Super glue is gonna come in handy. For the jetpack, I did add a magnet. 
I wanted it to be a little fancy. I love when, when things like this have magnets. And so I had a magnet here and there, boom, and it connects. Like I, I like that a lot. It's the little things, right? Or even looking at Cobb here, this isn't a good example because like it doesn't look that cool without his helmet at least. For this picture that I, I took of him, like I, I really liked the way it came out. I did change the color because I wanted it more red. I did take off his, his bandana that he had and like I think it looks really cool. I think it came out really nice and that was pretty much all I did. I didn't, I didn't even spray him, but it's just like a little touch to make it you know, look a little different and a little more more unique and a little more real too. One tip when it comes to cloth goods, if you're adding your own, the biggest thing is using really thin material. There's some leather out there that if it's real leather, it's gonna be thick. And so if you're making that at a 1 12th scale, it's not gonna work that well or at all. And so like using this, it's like kind of like that pleather, that plastic leather that you know, like it's, it's fake, right? It looks good, it looks real, especially at this scale, it looks like real leather, but it's, it's not. And so using really thin material, even like a fun random thing like this was just, it's old underwear, right? Because it's, you know, it was clean, it was clean, but I just tore, I cut it up and then I sewed it and here we are. Stretchy is good. Like I have some other ones that I tried to do that didn't work out as well because it's it's so stiff for certain pieces. Like if, it, if it's a cape, then it might not matter as much. But if it's like something for the body, then you do want it a little bit flexible. And then with that is adding wire. So for this, all for this Vader, it's not perfect. It was the, actually the first time I did this. And so I was like really impressed with how it came out, but I added a wire to the cape. For this wire, I used this white floral wire used for, for some Spider-Man webs that I made. It's extremely thin. Tried it with some thicker wire and it doesn't it doesn't look that good. And it, like, it looks too bulky. It looks like there's a wire in it. Like that's a, the that's a thing too, is like you don't want there, you don't want it to be obvious that, oh, there's a wire in it. And so all I did for this is I just measured the wire and then I, for the, I, I put it around all of his cape. It might be different for each figure or for each item. I just folded it over and, and just stitched it. Like I, I did use a sewing machine, which you don't have to, um, but this was my first time. Like I'm, I'm trying to venture into making more soft goods like this. And so I just stitched it all the way down. I did it also on Merrick's thing, which wasn't as good. And his is, look how thin that is. You can see my hand through it, but I just folded it over and I mean, when posing, it's tricky because you don't want it to be like, you know, like a lightning bolt folded, which I mean, it might still work. Once again, I'm learning, I'm trying. And so I'm just, I'm just sharing what I, what I, what I did. Cause I did get a lot of comments about adding the wire and like what wire did I use and how did I stitch it? So that, that's pretty much it. So this is the stock cape. This came with the Vader and it, but you know, it's just flat. And so all I did was place the wire, fold it over and then stitch and it's in there. And so I took, I took a few pictures with this. I really like how it came out. Like it just makes it more dynamic, right? The posing just looks a little bit more epic. Like whether you're adding a little bandana, whether you're adding a kit bash from another figure, or you're adding a wire to upgrade the soft goods that might be there already, or you know, you're just making a whole suit that you can put under your figure. Like it definitely can upgrade your figure and it's making it custom. The last way that you can make a custom figure is by making a custom figure from scratch. Like it's all your creation. Like one thing, I mean, I, I guess this is also kind of just painting, but this was a model kit Mandalorian that I put together. I, I painted him. So I don't know if that really counts. Might be more under painting. I just repainted the, the model figure, but that's, that's one way or that's one example. For this guy, this is actually a Spartan body, like a Halo Spartan that I had repainted, used the, the masking tape, and then painted on some of the yellow. And I tried to weather him up. That kind of gave it like a camo look, like he was supposed to be the commando, uh, clone commander Gregor. The head sculpt is, in, I think, Black Series boss commando. I don't really like the way the, the clone Black Series commanders look, like their, their body looks too small. So I just thought, I don't know if it was the body's too small or the head's too big, but I put him on the Spartan, which is like a seven inch figure. And like, so it's not on there perfectly, like it barely fits, but for, for posing, you know, I can just kind of move it however I want and it works. I repainted all of it, uh, matte coat, paint, tape, and then paint the details. And I really like the way it looks. I did this one a long time ago. Um, like once again, I can easily see how I could do it better, but, but that's how I did this one. 
And then my first like full custom ever was this Mandalorian who I wanted it to be like Super Mario themed. And it kind of like it, it kind of works out. Like one of the, the main things I was excited for is the denim jumpsuit. And it, and it came out OK. Right. This is a 3D printed uh, belt that I bought. It was for a Boba Fett that I, I, I popped on him. And then the armor, these are, these are from DTG Figures, which makes some really cool 3D prints and design. I have like a lot of their, their stuff. And that's like another tip is getting 3D prints, which like I wanna get into making my own, but for now, like I'm okay with buying like pieces here and there from, from other people. Like I have a box of 3D prints that, that I need to paint. And that's what I'm trying to do with some of the face paints. But yeah, I use some, some of those. I use like, this is from like another figure that I had cut off. And, and one tool that's gonna come in handy with this is gonna be a Dremel. I think it was last Christmas or my birthday last year or something, uh, my wife had bought me a Dremel and, and that's come in handy so much that I, I really love using it. Kind of scary at first. Uh, if you're a kid watching this, you have to be super careful with parent or guardian supervision, but but a Dremel is gonna be huge when it comes to, to customizing and upgrading like this. And so I, kinda, I didn't really know what to do with his boots. Uh, these were actually strapped on like super glue plus like these elastic bands that I cut just to kind of give them some pouches. This was like the biggest thing I didn't know what to do with is the the cape. Uh, first, I wanted it to be like a cape, you know, like how Mario has a cape, but then, but it wasn't really like coming out like how I wanted. And so I thought, well, why don't I just do something like, like Boba Fett? I still didn't like the way it looked. So I gave him this backpack, which was from Mezco, Old Man Logan also. What's under him are going to be these draw man bodies. Uh, I got these from a, a brand called Damn Toys. And I do have some of these other generic bodies that, that I bought. These ones are a little bit bigger that I do plan on, on making some custom figures. But there, there's, there's a few options out there that you can get to kind of start off as a base. And so even, even the idea of using like this guy, the whole body is the snow trooper. So, you know, it is kind of just an upgrade, you know, with paint and soft goods. Like you can, I do recommend checking out some of those generic bodies that you can get. And like, like a popular one is the draw man figure. So for this one, I did use an airbrush to paint. I, I did a base coat of black, black primer paints, airbrushed, and then I airbrushed some red. And I, I, I didn't plan on it coming out like this. I was thinking it was gonna be more like Mario red, but I guess because of the black undercoat and then it was a thin airbrush layer, it came out like that dark, like almost metallic looking. It's cool. I do have the black visor, but it had fallen off. Uh, also, these are from, these are from a model kit Boba Fett that I had. I think they were actually extras or I, I, I might've just taken taken it apart. And so I just kind of made those fit around him. For making this suit and for making this jumpsuit, like I don't want to get into too much detail when it comes to sewing. But one thing that I did make is like for, a, for the jumpsuit, like all this is, is I cut, cut the piece of fabric like this shape and so when I have it like this, all I did was fold it and like you can see like the outline of the shirt. And so I, there's a lot of slack because that's where you're gonna, I have it here, like this is where you're gonna sew. And so if you just sew that, like you can make, you make a shirt. And so is it, when you think of a regular t-shirt, is it gonna look like perfect form fitted, you know, fancy t-shirt? No, cause it's gonna look like a T. I mean, even though like a t-shirt it's called a t-shirt, it's not really a, perfectly straight T, right? There's some texture, like a uh, ergonomic design to it. But for a jumpsuit, right? Like I'm having all these armor on it. It doesn't matter. So if you're interested in making jumpsuit armor stuff, like that's a good, you know, you can get this template and kind of look at this template. And then for pants, what I ended up doing, because uh, uh, there's not a lot of action figure soft good stuff out there. Like a lot of it's like Barbie or doll making. But for this, what I came up with or what I saw like techniques from other people is, you know, if you trace your figure, like you can kind of trace like a rough design of the pant, pant line and how you want it. But then the key is like, that's easy, but the key is to adding like extra flaps. So you add these extra flaps because that's where you're gonna like fold and that's where you're gonna connect. This is one leg and half the waist. So if you make two of these, and then you combine them, like you sew them here and then you sew the leg. And then like, that's how I made these pants. And so I had this other one that I did and I added like some extra stitches. Like you can be creative with it. There's a lot of ways you can add like pockets or whatever. 
but you know for this one for the snow trooper i just wanted to keep it basic and then for this one i think i kind of hand stitched like you don't need a sewing machine but once you get the hang of a sewing machine like i, I just i used my wife's like i didn't go buy one um well i actually bought it for her but it was for a long time ago we had the sewing machine so like might as well use it and it definitely made it uh, you know way easier once i figured out you know the best way like i can just pop it up boom do a single stitch here and there and like it's good so that's uh, that's a, there's a learning curve to it right but but i mean that's like i i want to do it i wanted to invest um my time into learning it because i'm excited about this and that's my my next journey right so like i said like this is my next phase of wanting to to make better photos is to just upgrade my figures and make my custom figures so hopefully this helped and hopefully you got some inspiration and if there's anything you want me to go into more detail like please let me know if you got anything out of it like you know subscribe hit the like leave a comment i really appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one. Creates and inspire.